Welcome to the Massacre Matinee. So we're, go- we're gonna start out with a touch of sadness today. Yeah. True, I can- this, this Justin and true crime yeah. happened. It happened minutes. like, yeah, minutes ago. <laughs> 20 minutes ago. I killed Chippy. Oh no. It wasn't on purpose. He was running across the street and I, I was driving uphill and Blind hill, I can't swerve, I can't stop. It's a stick shift car. I mean, what do you want me to do? I gotta, yeah, just, I gotta yeah. just kind of up the, up the hill, but... <laughs> I feel like I should clarify that Chippy's a chipmunk, obviously. Yeah, well, yeah Ch- Chippy the chipmunk. Yeah. He was my favorite chipmunk. Didn't my, want anyone to think you just, like, ran backyard. over the neighborhood cat that, like, runs around over the bottom of that hill, too. Oh, God, no, but the, the neighborhood cat is very friendly. Welcome back to the matinee. Yeah. The frog has returned. Oh. Hello. I don't know if anyone can hear Bella's little news. Oh, I'm sure they will. They'll he- you can hear the bell jingling in the background. Oh, yeah. Easter egg for our episodes. Yeah, instead of river eating I would sit there and giggle to myself when I hear it. I'm like, hee <laughs> <laughs> So, what do you have for us today, Kate? So, we're doing another Michigan case, but this time we're time traveling. It's not cur- it wasn't recent. Thank God, because this would have been fucking horrible if this was recent. But have any of you guys heard of the Bath School bombing? No. No. Okay. Well, this one takes place uh, downstate, kind of towards... um, It's kind of towards, like, the border of Ohio, kind of that area. So, like, as far downstate as you can kind of get. So, our main focus... His name is Andrew Philip Kehoe, because he's a fucking hoe. <laughs> he really... <laughs> no, this man... Facts? Question mark? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if there's any infidelity, but th- this man is the definition of petty. Is like, the first thing I can tell you guys about. Okay. And, oh my god. I get... I'll just, like, say this in the beginning that, like, my I, I got this from a podcast called Last Podcast on the Left. If you want to fucking laugh, they're a great podcast to listen to. But they did one on them, and they go a little bit more in uh, depth. Are they also on Spotify? Yes. I think they're on the same platform as we are. Okay. Um, if they are on Spotify, you will find a link for their channel down in the description. Ooh. Um... So, he was born February 1st, 1872. So, kind of... 1872. 1872! You did not tell me that I needed to, like, hitch up the horses and shit to time travel. <laughs> um, fucking forgive me on this pronunciation of the city in Michigan. I... You are Ooh, I, and raised Ooh, I like this game. I like this game. <laughs> Faith, this will be your first time playing this game. So she's going to say it, and then you take the iPad and you uh. say it. And I take the iPad and I say it. I would it. really okay. love to tell you guys of how much she fucking bounced. I am so excited. I love this game because we've done it like three times. I think so, yeah. It's not even, a, it's, it's officially a game now. This is the third time. I Welcome to the game. This up to know this how to like say it. like our trivia it. game. Forgotten it. I want to say it's Tecumseh, but I don't know. It is right in the fucking beginning. Right, right there. First sentence. <laughs> Tecumseh? I don't know. That, that is might be interesting. Tecumseh? Tecumseh sounds right. It is T E C U M S E H. I'm so sorry if for some reason somebody who like lived there. <laughs> to, yeah, they're all screaming. To come up. Yeah. That sounds better. That sounds more. I'm good at native names sometimes. I could be wrong. I'm just guessing. It feels native. Sounds it, in the spelling. It's got looks. a. It's got a lower native Michigan vibe has and a lot. Lower, lower Michigan Actually, know, and yeah. Wisconsin as well. They both have a lot of native names, and I think that's probably part of why I pick There's up on it so easy. Because I'm used to so. places like Sheboygan. And why I love Sheboygan. I I have a bunch of friends that like live in Florida and everything like that. I'm like, say this name, and I had them say Gogibic and Antonagon, and <laughs> Gogibic was a lot. And I'm like, you're close, but Antagonon was how they said Antonagon, and I'm just like, you know Anta- how much cooler Antagon, it would be if it was Antagon awesome. instead of Antagon. Antagon. That would be so cool. The best one that I got uh, trying to get somebody else to pronounce the name was for Kakana. 
Down in Florida, they said Kakanaw. Ypsilanti is another one that gets them. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've used that one on people, too. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, so, we're just we're, really we're, spilling where we <laughs> We're back in time in the back late in 1800s in yeah, Tecumseh, where, Michigan. Where it starts off. With a hoe. It's funny because he grew up on a farm. Everybody grew up on a farm back then, <laughs> <Yeah>. basically. <laughs> Everything. It was a farm. Mm. Yeah, and he turned out to be a farmer, too. Um, he was yeah. one of, I don't know how, like, in the age range or whatever, he what spot he was in. I just know he was a part of the youngest of 13 children. Wow. They were busy. But then again, in well, that time, you had to have a lot, yeah, so I was at least one say. would survive. <laughs> well, not only so at least one would survive, but, I mean, after a certain age, Child you're labor. just, yeah, especially as farmers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, after high school, he attended Michigan State University for electrical engineering. Good degree. Yeah. Pretty, pretty interesting. Um, there, he actually met his future wife. They didn't get together at this point, but that's just kind of where they met and knew each other. Um, her name uh, was Ellen Price, but she had a nickname. I think it was like uh, Nellie. She'd go by Nellie. Oh, I don't really cute. like her name. That is Nellie. cute. Um, she was the daughter of actually a really fan, uh, really rich, um, Lansing family. Okay. And Lansing's the capital of Michigan for anyone that's not geologically smart. Um, after college, he kind of just said, fuck Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, same sometimes, <laughs> you know, uh, for several, several years, he kind of moved to the Southwest and he was an electrician. Um, and see, no, no, I always get in trouble because I know some people say s- St. Louis and St. Louis. Isn't that a big debate? That's like uh-huh. it is. A, it's it's a huge debate because People it was from named St. Louis debate it or St. Louis do see. I don't know. I, mean, I think it's St. Well, Louis. Well, it was. I believe it was but... named after King Louis, wasn't it? And that's why the debate is a yeah. thing is because of the pronunciation between that's Louis and Louis. I've heard. Uh, I'm but say I've also heard cause... people that say it depends where you live in the state because people mm-hmm. from that state argue about it. So right, people in the city argue. About I don't know how anybody that doesn't live there. So anyway, have an opinion St. Louis, Missouri. All right. Uh, during this time, it was about 1911. Now, um, he got injured on the job because I think he was working on like a real area for okay, uh, oh, which would have been a huge thing around that time. Yeah, doing electrical work, and he actually. Suffered a severe head, uh, head injury that, like, he fell down, hit his head really hard, and it put him in a coma for two weeks. Oh, dang. So he... Okay, with a little bit of reference, I have read a story about a guy that worked on the railroad at the same time that took a railroad spike through his fucking head. Same area, too. <laughs> I'm pretty and, sure. And he, wasn't, and he wasn't such a little bitch about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, didn't they remove it and he was just like, all right, back on my day. I think yeah. he ended up dying, though, didn't he? After the-, the guy with the railroad spike? Yeah. No, he didn't end up dying, but he did have a significant personality change and everybody kind of started oh, to hate yeah. him. Oh, yeah, it was like he turned into He a was a total player. fucking asshole. Yeah, he went from But he survived an and he asshole. wasn't such a little bitch about it. <laughs> okay, so he fell, he hit his head, he was in a coma for two months? Yeah, uh, two weeks. Two weeks. So okay. then after that, he was kind of like, all right, fuck Missouri. I'm going back to Michigan. <laughs> traumatized from yeah. Missouri. Yeah, and so he moved back in um, with Not his Missouri parents, well. but between him Guess being this. gone and him leaving, so he was, uh, so it was like before 1911. Okay. Um, his mother had actually passed away and his oh. dad remarried in that time. And that, I mean, unless his family made a point to f- track him down and write a letter, they would have never... Yeah, he didn't fucking know. He came back and his dad was yeah. Oh, by the way, your mom's bitch. dead. Mm-hmm. Mm. And th- depending on what source you look at, because, like, there's a bunch of books that were written about uh, this dude's life and everything like that, um, the events of kind of what happened next, they were like, oh, this happened when he was 14, or he was already a Adult, he was in his 20s. Like, there, there's a whole lot of like Back they can't get the age. Record like, keeping was difficult in that yeah. time. So, the events were. I'm gonna assume he ages. was a young adult. I'm assuming that he probably was out of college by the time he was 20 and probably came back by the time, you know, he was like in his early 20s. Makes sense. That, that's just where I'm gonna put this. Um, 
So after his mom died and uh, his father remarried, um, her name was Frances Wilder. And Andrew hated her so much because she was mean. He was like, you're replacing my mom. She just like... The evil stepmom. Yeah, just didn't care about any of his dad's other kids or any kind of thing like that. Okay. Just was like... Yeah. But his dad was like, love of my life right there. Um... You know, you ever have those comments where you're not sure if you should say them, but you kind of want to anyway? Yeah, say it. This is an optional edit out. Um, <laughs> Leave it in. Leave it in. 13 kids, but they're not my fucking kids. But she gives such good head, right? <laughs> I mean, how can you not stick around with a bitch unless she does something good? And it's either in that but time... The 13 kids were his kids. Yeah, they were his kids, but they were mostly grown up, right? Yeah. At this point, they would have mostly well, been yeah, grown up. Andrew she didn't really have to. Youngest, yeah. She didn't really have to give a shit about raising kids yeah, because she, they're she all adults by infants. now. Yeah, yeah, they're all grown, raised, pretty much. So he's looking for his midlife crisis pussy, basically. His end of life. I mean, honestly, but it, it was, it was the early 1900s. 35, end of life, whatever. Like, 35, like, is the new 80. Okay, exactly. <laughs> um. So the same year he returns. I'm sorry I keep staring at you and completely ignoring you. Oh, well, so I'm excited. sitting across from you. I keep looking you. at the yeah. cat occasionally. It's the yeah. orientation. Honestly, that's what I do. I just <laughs> stare. Like usually Kitty. Nugget's staring me down, mm-hmm. and I'm staring her down, too. Just staring at Kitty. Um, but... So the same year he moves back in with his father, so he's only known Francis for, like, a few months. Mm-hmm. She fucking dies. Oh! Score! I bet he's <laughs> thinking, you know. Um, September 17th. <laughs> of, do we know when? 1911. Okay. Frances was severely burned when the family stove exploded and she was complete, uh, when she was, like, trying to, like, light it because, you know, it's a gas stove, you have to light I, it and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, that was common like, the grease then, or the oil. I think it was actually one of the old, like, uh, uh, it, not it, the gas one. In that time, it would have been either probably an oil burner or a wood burner. Like, because of the explosion, like, she got doused in the fuel for it. Yeah, probably the oil, oil burner then. So it was starting catching fire, and I know, no, it was an oil burner because Kiho conveniently walked in and was like, oh shit, she's on fire, and grabbed a water bucket and, and it, it flared it up. And it flared it up. Oh um, man, Wicked Witch of the West you style. Don't put water on an oil fire. Yeah. You or smother, fire. yeah, smother your oil <laughs> and grease fires. Burn responsibly, kids. Baking yeah. soda works great. In a and place. after that, he or just salt. kind of didn't help her after that. He was just like, well, I tried throwing water on her. Broke out the marshmallows. <laughs> just basically left. And like his dad came in and found her just a crisp. Like she was still alive. She didn't die at this point. Oh my lord. She was still alive. And they just walk in because I think he went and got his dad. And she's just a crisp little fucking body is sitting in the kitchen. And then she ended up dying then. I'm surprised she didn't die sooner, because no. in a lot of cases that you see that involve fire, they yeah. die from smoke inhalation, they yeah, burn their lungs. she died from her injuries, but she was, like, head to toe. Like, even if Damn. she did live, like, she had no, like... Chance. No of... chance of living. So if he just grabbed a blanket that. and, like, tackled her, she probably would have been fine. Oh, but yeah. he was like, well, fuck this bitch. Yeah, basically. Um, I'm surprised he even went and got his dad, it sounds like. Yeah, well... Well, it <laughs> took conveniently long enough that she was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> took a sweet time. And... And then, you know, just life goes on. And in 1912, he meets back up with Ellen. And uh, and then the Titanic married. sank. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was the same year that it sank. Um, and they were married, you know, still living on his father's farm. And then at one point, they're like, you know what? We want our own farm. We want to start our own roots, you know. So, in- so him and Ellen just took over the farm? Mm-mm. They bought their own farm in oh. um, 1919. The couple bought a 185-acre farm outside the village of Bath um, from Nellie's aunt for $12,000. And if I, did this, I got numbers beforehand. I was Thank smart. you. Um, though I just got it for, uh, this one's from 2022, not 2020 came up we apologize for inaccurate research it's basically the same thing at a few dollars (laughs) um that twelve thousand dollars in 1919 money equates to three hundred and sixty four thousand dollars in today's money 
and he paid and twelve thousand dollars is still more than I have. Yeah, yeah. and he paid <laughs> half of that in cash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But he was he made good money as an electrician because he again he had fucking half of it. Even today, I feel like you make good money as an electrician. Oh yeah, any, one yeah. of those big any trade jobs, trades. any trades. Yeah. Um, and then like the other half of the uh, the price he took out a mortgage on. Um, so we're gonna take a short break of like his little little, little backstory because we gotta get into his personality. You know the pettiness, so we understand his motives or what fucking happened. I wish they could see my eye rolls because this is <laughs> fucking crazy and I don't know how man got from point A to point B, but I can see it in his mind. Um, well, you see, psychos don't need roadmaps. Like, I don't know if he was fucking like psycho. I think he just didn't Vegeta. know how to direct his anger. <laughs> because, okay, right. people with psychoses or mental impairments don't need roadmaps. They'll find a fucking way mm-hmm. to get there. Yeah. Well, after, like, the whole, you know, incident that we'll get to happened, um, a lot of people talked to his, like, family and friends and neighbors just to kind of get an idea of, like, what caused it. Um, Everyone kind of regarded that, you know, he was a very smart person. Like, he was really intelligent. He was always tinkering on things. Like, he could, if you had an electrical problem, he was your guy. Like, you know. Right. Really smart. Um, But he had a fucking temper. (laughs) Like... If you didn't agree with him, or you just straight up said something stupid to him, he'd get super fucking impatient and just blow up on you. But let's say he was like, the sky's blue, and you're like, no, it's like green. He'd freak the fuck out at you. Oh, so he wouldn't even give you a chance? Wouldn't even give you a chance, he wouldn't explain it to you to try to understand. He would just be like, you're a fucking dumbass. That almost, (laughs) I mean... With with the high intelligence, the thing about high intelligence even today is it seems like a lot of those super smart people end up having like social Seniority social complex. issues. They also get a little bit of a god complex. Too. A, l- a little bit, like I'm too smart for this. Like, I'll be honest, I was in all sorts of like advanced gifted child programs in mm-hmm. school, and but you I hear felt, that and you're like, I'm better than you. No, fucks. I I <laughs> I felt super fucking special for being in all of those classes mm-hmm. and everything, but. I graduated through an alternate program, and I'm dumb as shit. I'm not actually dumb as <laughs> Bro, shit. Bro, I got but my like, yellow honors rope, and I couldn't fucking tell you how to do long division. <laughs> like, I I am <laughs> not book smart. I just know enough about life to not die. <laughs> <laughs> Survival skills. If you like told me a topic and you gave me a test right away, I'd be able to fucking remember it. But if you were like, "Hey, do this math test," and- <laughs> especially with that Common Core shit that they're adding into school now, please don't teach Jaden Common Core. I'm horrified. God. The way that they're doing I will tutor your daughter. I'm horrified your because math. I'm great at math. This common core math? Mm-mm, no. I don't know about that. The little it's bit I've seen fucked. it, it looks so much more confusing. And, and, and the math like, teachers can't use the excuse of you're not always going to have a calculator in your pocket. Because guess what? Now we, we fucking do. Yeah. Bro, they were telling me that when we even exactly. had a calculator in our pockets. Mm-hmm. I remember, when, this is like way off topic, but I remember when I was in fourth grade, I had a mechanical pencil. And I was trying to find lead for it, and my teacher was like, you know what? They're not going to let you use mechanical pencils for this reason in fifth grade, so you need to get your act together. Mm -hmm. I get into fifth grade, and he's like, please use mechanical pencils, because I don't have a pencil sharpener in my room. (laughs) (laughs) I use mechanical pencils throughout my entire education. I I used middle school, grade school, I liked it because you didn't have to get up in the middle of the class. I'm I'm the old lady of the group, so my favorite was those little ones with the plastic with the piece of lead where you'd have to, like, take them out of the front and put them in the back to push the the lead forward. At least you guys knew they existed. And then you're fucked. Well, I figured out how to roll pieces of paper to fill that up. yeah smart no and i went to like nine different school systems oh, moved shit. a lot as a kid so Same. i've never ever had a teacher that petty i'm just gonna say that's petty incredible petty, petty fucking person that's petty. she also how she, does okay so how does her pettiness never compare be allowed to use these pencils oh his is like, definitely what? fucking worse because he fucking he's, blows he's, up he's, school i mean so. well, we're on track though we're on track okay he blows up a school out it's of school? pettiness yeah <laughs> like he gets petty and he fucking blows up school we'll, we'll get to 
Do you <laughs> want to maybe, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Again, we got to explain the pettiness. Um, so... <laughs> Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I can edit as needed. <laughs> oh no, this is great. Um, so keep they it, also right? talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, keep it. they also talk about how really neatly dressed he is, and then this kind of puts him up. He always wants really nice clothing. He doesn't like if he got. He's, he's not got working on. Go. He's working on a farm. You're gonna get dirty on a farm. Tuxedo. No, <laughs> but it was like, it was like nice, <laughs> nice clothes for you know. But it's not like what you would think that he'd be working on a farm with. If he right. was out working fields or working on a machine or something like that and he got dirt he'd have to go inside right away and get a new shirt on if he felt sweaty he had to go get a new shirt on he always had a germaphone i don't i couldn't think of it he just wanted to look clean he wanted to Hmm. look presentable so i feel like he might have had a touch of like ocd or something Something. like that something something that would have probably been really really hard to Mm -hmm. pin down especially in that time i mean right up until like the 40s they didn't really have those. was a problem for women, yeah. so... He also was a really fucking bad farmer. <laughs> because he didn't want to work the fields. He, he didn't want to get dirty. He wanted yeah. to work on, like, the equipment. He loved tinkering with that shit. So he was, like... His neighbors would, like, drive past him and they'd be like, he's never in the fields. He's just only ever working on the same, like, four fucking tractors. And, like, tinkering with them. Um, he was really fucking abusive towards his farm animals. Oh, so much okay. so, a horse didn't want to work the fields anymore, and it just, it was too things. tired. Yeah, it was too tired, didn't want to do it, so he beat it to death. He beat a horse to death. Isn't there some kind of saying about that? Can't, don't, be don't beat horse. a dead horse. Yeah. But he's like, he fucked up. He, yeah. <laughs> Well, he beat it to death. He didn't beat it after death. I mean, well, he sounds you don't so petty. Know he might no, have. the question yeah, is, is he, it's probably while he was from. beating that horse and building up a sweat and getting covered in dirt, did he go change his shirt? Probably afterwards. <laughs> I suppose he would have been changing it every, like, five seconds. Yeah. So. He comes oh, out with a stack. Jokes on you, Honey, shirtless. I need you to wash these clothes. I feel bad for fucking Ellen because she had to wash oh, all of man. these clothes. <laughs> no, I don't know how much this that costs. How many shirts he owned, probably? Oh, well, I mean, back in that shirt. back in that time, it, you just had a fucking bar of soap and a, and a bucket of water. Yeah, bucket of water. He still have to have a lot of shirts. I mean, I mean, if he's changing it multiple times a day, I'm I guess sure like, she was sewing them for her and everything. Like, like everything, that. nonstop, buying them nonstop, like the materials, sewing them. Oh, that poor woman. Yeah. That poor woman. And then, of course, running a household too. And oh, then God, kids. this poor woman. I don't know if they had kids. I yeah, okay. I was gonna say I okay. wasn't sure about that. They. I, I guess I assumed anywhere. Yeah, I couldn't find anywhere think, where it said but... that they had kids together. So I mean, it sounds like it's wanna, good that they If didn't. he doesn't want to get dirty and sweaty, I mean... <laughs> he can't put the work in. Honey, I need to go take a shower, but you just started. <laughs> um, and, you know, he was Catholic. So, you know, went to church. He was right. a good church man. And uh, he caused a scene because... The church was like, hey, all the members need to pay this fee, like the parish like assessment fee or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I wasn't raised Catholic. I was raised Lutheran, so I have no idea what the parish assessment fee is. Basically, help us determine how much money we can, yeah, how much you love God. I'm sorry. Yeah, basically, yeah. I understand. Um, But in a non-offensive religious way, it has to do with basically- They just want money. Yeah. How can we get money out of our, mm-hmm. our patrons? Well, he didn't fucking and... want to pay it because he was a cheap ass, too. He was really fugal. Like, mm-hmm. if he didn't have to fucking pay for it, he wasn't fucking paying for it. Well, so if... he, like, stood up and was, like, freaking out at this priest. He's like, I'm not fucking paying this. <laughs> so he left the church. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's why a church in New London thought that my stepdad was, like, Satan. Because <laughs> they wanted you to give, like, a percentage of your paycheck. Oh, my God, to- no. Yeah. 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 There's that stories of that in my church. family as well, that my family was St. Lutheran and they left a church because of a similar mm. thing. There was like a new person that was running it and they wanted to start mm. implementing that and they refused and Dude, they were kicked out of the church great because of it. Up. They would just raise money like, by having people I think it really just depends I mean, on the yeah, people. So, sometimes there'd be like bake sales and stuff, but one of their mm-hmm. things was, oh, we, w- we would like a percentage of your paycheck and the ones that donate the most get the most attention because they make more money. And so basically it's it, it kind of put across this vibe of like if you're poor god doesn't love you as much oh yeah like this weird hierarchy yeah and social stigmatism yeah, I, and... 
pressure. This is why you're and, atheist now. And God's supposed to love you. Right? I don't maybe well, a little bit give of fucking charity atheist. I don't and know. Help each other. I, I I wouldn't necessarily call you atheist. I would just call you a don't give a fuckist. I'm a don't give a fuckist and maybe mm-hmm. a little, I like a little bit of a Satanist. <laughs> Because, okay, no, if you look at their actual views, it's love thyself, not others. You know, take care of yourself. Fuck everyone else. Has you're nothing good, to you're actually a good do. friend, though. Has nothing to actually do with saying if you look into the actual Yeah, truth. I mean, it's a lot of it. It's nothing, like, harmful. It's no, it, it's literally and... just, like, so... hey, you were in charge of your own body. Just no, I agree with a lot of the views on them. I just, I don't know. They both, like, d- isn't part of the definition. Like, you believe in nothing as well. Yeah. Like, literally nothing. Mm-hmm. See, I'm a very, like, oh, I yeah, need to see it to well believe just it being... type of person. Which also is why I can't say I'm any type of religion. Because mm, especially I, yeah. Christianity, you have to fully commit. I, I, I was raised weird, by a very Christian yeah. Lutheran family. And, like, I was seen I definitely as think Satan people who because are, like, I don't accept s- Jesus. But spirit. I don't not accept him. I just... Yeah don't fully believe i believe in evolution (laughs) i i think that people that have something to believe in probably have easier more stress-free lives yeah how i view it but but at the same time i i showed you a a page of like stuff that i wrote earlier today Mm -hmm. from yesterday because when i have depressed days i come up with like my deepest quotes Mm-hmm. And and the one that I came up with that I think fits this situation is I'm too afraid to live because I'm terrified to die. Oh shit! And I think it's just because I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, is it I gonna agree, be I'm not like it, before so you're weirdly. born? It's just nothing. That's what I think it is. Yeah, I'm I'd not be cool with that. Yeah. And I'm, then if God does exist in a pure in a pure Christian form, I have issues because I have a lot of questions for that. I'd like to be I'd the Bible really surprised if I mad. walk up and there's I'm like fucking angry. gates, I'd be like, shit. I, I would so. like to clarify, I am not afraid <laughs> of dying. I am afraid of the answer, the guilt that I will feel in the afterlife of not being here for the people that I feel need me. As that's, dumb as it mm-hmm. sounds, no, that's I'm not afraid. Dumb. No. To, I'm no. afraid to die because you don't know how the podcast works. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't edit this without you. <laughs> I am afraid to die because I know that on Sundays my mom wants me to come over and hang out for a while with her and my stepdad. I am afraid to die because at 5 p.m. he's gonna walk through that door and I want to be here to Are greet him make and me cry. Smile. You know what I mean? Oh like, shit! No, I feel the see, same way, dude. I'm terrified to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the frog over 20. here just fuck you guys. <laughs> like, no, I'm fucking like, very sad. But I guess out. what gives me peace in it with with my own father passing and stuff like that is I really hope that like once you do leave your body, those are human feelings, and they're gone. That everything makes sense. That naive hope that doesn't matter what the answer is whether there's I've got nothingness too much, I've so got too much anxiety well, if I die and the only exists, thing I have left is my anxiety like I want to kill myself again I mean, I like, let's do another round fucked up that's my kind of comfort can I scum save my own life because I feel the same way but I feel like you know that's part of like being a human mm-hmm. hopefully maybe and like everyone talks about peace you know, and even, like, I don't know if you believe in mediums, like, a lot of them, you know, talk oh, about most people that they're at peace, that, that you don't feel I those do things, and so not going to say whether I do or not, but that is what you mm. hear a lot of the talk is, so I hope naively that I is mean, correct, that you just see, don't that, feel that way. I, like, it all makes sense, and, like, you see yeah, it, but yeah. it doesn't matter. Not to sound mean and selfish to your I loved ones, no, I can't it's, say that I'm a like, full atheist. you see the bigger picture, you see their life, where it's going to go, and it's all There's nothing you can do about it now, so why are you freaking out about it? And I get that, but I just... Between our human self and our soul. I'm just saying, if I come I back hope. as a ghost, I guess I'm ha- in a sort of way. bitches. <laughs> and exactly, and have fun with it. If you don't, you know, I don't know. I guess if you're, if you don't get to go, and you are stuck here. Let's if I die fun. before the Ghost Adventures crew does, I'm gonna go like fucking oh, Zach. haunt one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Zach Biggins or whatever you say, Baggins. Baggins, yeah. Baggins. I'll go fucking oh. haunt one of them. If, but anyway, if, <laughs> yeah, so if you die before the Ghost Adventure guys, can you do me a favor and just yeah. like pull a faith and just kind of walk up behind him and be like leave it in <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> leave it unedited <laughs> in, no, in one of in one of their new episodes the newest one I think that just came out they like um 
did this like they uh, investigated this one place that's now a preschool but it like used to be like a farmhouse and everything like that and they were like doing i think it was either an evp or it was one of the spirit box things and he the ghost was like go to the gym mm. <laughs> and that <Zach, laughs> like Subconscious is like I stopped weightlifting. I like, like a ghost that doesn't talk ago. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine getting insulted? I'd like to clarify: there was like no gym in this like preschool. Okay, so like, it really so did not make sense. Yeah, it was no really I just like context. go to the gym. He was just like, go to hey, can you tell I haven't weightlifted in a while? <laughs> so oh, right. now back, that we're back on topic. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, so Kiko was kind of known as a injustice collector, a.k.a. if he had a grudge, he wasn't fucking letting it go. Like, he, he would, like, let's say you stole his pencil. He fucking had a grudge on you. You were going that to the death That little note. shit. It was little shit. Okay, so that, that level of petty actually ties back to that 77 Minutes McDonald's mm-hmm. murderer case then. It, it's similar thing. He would ben. always remember. He had his list of the yeah, what society yeah. owed him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was really, really like that. So now we're kind of getting into the time of the leading up. Like what happened to lead up to the incident? Which we already know a school blew up. A school blew up to lead up to the bombing. Um, He was really thrifty, and everyone kind of knew that. Like, he was a cheap ass, so they were like, you know what? But not him. I don't know. So the the school um, department and the school board was just like, you know what? You'd make a really good treasurer. We're a new, like, we're we're a school. We want to make sure we can, you know, save money where we want, right? And all that kind of stuff. So he became the treasurer in 1924 um, for the F Consolidated School Board. Um, while on the board, he fought for lower taxes. Uh, was often at cross purposes with other member members of the board upset with them for like arguing against him or voting against them he would constantly like if he didn't like the person he'd constantly like no matter what like even if he agreed with what this person was like proposing he'd be like no i'm voting against you so he was real fucking petty in this no no fuck you <laughs> no no fuck yeah literally no no fuck you and if people got in his way, he'd, like, really fuck them over with it. Um, the superintendent really didn't fucking like him. And Kiho also didn't like him in return. And because of that, since he was the treasurer, he was like, the superintendent's embezzling. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I suppose he can set up the papers. Yeah. And, like, constantly had these allegations. And none of the board was like... No, he's fucking not. Like, we know he's not. You're the only one in charge of the money. Right. He has nowhere access to it. Like, no. <laughs> it's not happening. Um, but the fact that he tried, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is not the, like, only public kind of figure position he had. In 1925, he was appointed the Bath Township Clerk. Kind of doing, like, the same job, just... For the township. Okay, so just money management type stuff? Essentially, but he wasn't, like, the treasurer for the township, but he was, like, he, he was involved. Uh, but th- the next election in 1926, um, he was defeated. <laughs> no one fucking oh, liked him. Oh, damn it. <laughs> no, I gotta hold a grudge. And he was so pissed at this person, uh, I couldn't find out who beat him, um, because he had lost publicly, so he was, like, embarrassed. Humiliated, yeah. Publicly. Oh, yeah, no. so he was, like, fucking pissed and everything like that. Well, they, the school board was like, you know what? I have these plans. We're going to build a new school. I wanted a new school building. You know, the township was growing. It wasn't a small little town. They didn't right. need just, like, the little shack. They're like, we need a bigger school. So they raised taxes and built the school and everything like that and he was just like i'm not fucking paying these taxes and they were like you gotta pay your taxes so he was just like government do be like that sometimes yeah um 
And he was so fucking pissed about the taxes. He was so pissed about the fact that he lost. He just kind of stopped working on this farm. He was just like, fuck the farm. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> doing it. Like, like, so he basically said, fuck Michigan again, or just fuck the No, farm. he's still in, in Michigan. Okay. He was just like, I'm not going to do the fucking farm work. And like it got to the point. I don't want to play with my tractors anymore. The neighbors couldn't decide: is he gonna get revenge or is he gonna kill himself? Like they could not figure it out. They just knew they he could, was a, could swing a both bubbling ways. man of rage. Yeah. Um, but also during this time, um, because this kind of happened over a couple of years, like a year, three year gap kind of thing. Um, Nellie was like really, really sick with tuberculosis. Um, okay. So she was, like, in and out of the hospital constantly. And because of that, hospital bills kind of started racking up. So now he has hospital bills. He has his mortgage. He has these taxes that he has to pay. Plus, you know, he's not making a whole lot of money being the treasurer for the school. He doesn't want to pay anything for the school. And they were kind of, like, the first ones to be like, hey, make to our school kind of thing. And he was just like, I'm so fucking tired of people wanting to take my money. Even though he stopped working on his farm, that also paid money Mm -hmm. but he didn't want to get dirty and he just Mm -hmm. wanted to play with his tractors so he he wasn't making money necessarily anyway so he just said fuck it i'm not paying shit and so he stopped paying his mortgage stopped paying the hospital bills just didn't pay taxes he just didn't pay anything because he was like they're not gonna fucking like i I don't fucking want to do these i don't agree with these and was there debtors prison back in the 20s i don't know if it was prison but i know like his house was basically going to be in foreclosure, and... I know at one point, I believe at one point, there was, like, if you're in debt, they can just send you to jail and be like, fuck you. Even though you can't work to pay off your debt if you're in jail, but... Or they can street I guess you. It's, I, I guess don't know, I'd be like, like hey, shit, thing. I get like, three fucking meals a day, I got a roof over my head mm. that I don't have to pay for, like, thanks. <laughs> right. No, I actually have a family story about someone in my family that uh, ran a business for... Eight years without paying taxes. How the fuck you get away with it for eight years? Let's see, my dad was born in 71. He said this happened when he was around 13. Two men in suits showed up at the front door that were from the IRS and audited her for everything she owned, and they sold everything to pay back her debt, and they handed her a check for five grand that was left. Damn. I don't know about the debtor's prison, but that's what they did. They just kind of come in the And that that would have been in the 80s. Yeah, Yeah, about the 80s. Yeah. Reference. Your dad would They don't been. let you get away with it, I can tell you that. Not yeah. for long. They they showed up at the door. Oh, he also stopped his insurance <laughs> that's, payments. That's the crazy thing about filing taxes, though, is, like, when you file taxes every year, you've got to make sure that you know exactly yeah. how much well, money I mean, you owe them, but they already know exactly running, how yeah, much just money be like you owe fucking them. Britain. Send us a fucking bill. Like, well, she was running fuck? a caregiver <laughs> facility, too, so a nursing oh, home. So yeah, the amount yeah. of money she was that's... probably making as well... Mm. I that's don't what know the details, it, that's but what I makes can it guess. more problematic. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't not pay taxes on a business, right? Any business, but well, you should. especially one that's probably making the amount of money. She right. There had to be insurance fraud in that too. Multiple. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. I all I know is that she didn't go to prison for whatever reason. She got <laughs> okay. a, the only thing that saved her was she owned enough properties on her personal that it covered her debt. But at the end of it, she lost. Her Multiple houses that she owned. She lost her business. She lost her but car. They probably, everything. They she probably got a check figured for five that grand. the money she didn't even have her clothes was... in her house anymore. Like they came in and they kicked took. her out. Like my like, bitch. Everything is ours, and yeah. we will contact you after. And yeah, she they, was lucky to get a check. Is how well, it was they, explained. They to probably us. looked at it as I'm willing to bet all of this money that she didn't pay us is what bought all of this stuff. And if it was enough, it's ours. <laughs> if it was enough that she lost a vehicle and multiple houses, like that's the hell only of a thing debt. that she didn't lose when it is, was an inherited property through a trust. Oh, yeah, because, because they had she paperwork ended up moving to there, that, yeah. and the lifestyle change was very significant. I believe it in the family forever after that. Was it a positive lifestyle change? Or? No. Oh, no. Well, I'm struggling, from, very poor, like... From having a shit well, I, All because nothing. she didn't pay okay. her taxes, so pay your taxes. I Maybe I phrased that wrong. <laughs> uh, very poor, yes, but, like, a situation like that, like, did she become a better person, or Absolutely was she still not. a stupid bitch? Absolutely not. She is my grandmother. <laughs> I feel She like- is horrible. I, I feel like you I love were, her and I have respect for her. She knows this. I, I, feel, I feel like you were just like in a court of law just now. You just leaned down, leaned in on the microphone. Just absolutely yes, not, Your Honor. Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, Grandma. Actually, Your Honor. We have we have respect for you, but damn. <laughs> we have respect for you, but respectfully, fuck you. <laughs> That's pretty much how a conversation went at 13. And also at 16. Mm. We're going to have to just have a special little episode on, on 
face yeah. fucked up history. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. So back to Keo. <laughs> now we're actually to the disaster. So okay. we have the background. Like you okay. just everyone in the town fucking and, hated him. He hated everyone. And so, at this point, it's like what mid twenties ish. Uh, May nineteen ninety seven. Ninety seven. Damn. Twenty seven. I'm twenty seven. Ninety seven is when my you sister was born. Out. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> like, you be a whiz. No. Ninety seven is when my sister was born. I was. Okay, so May I have of so 19- many thoughts happening in this brain. That's um, it. May of 1927. 1927. Um, so a few things kind of happened. Okay. Um, so on the 16th of May, um, Kiho killed Nellie. Damn it, I like Nellie. She had a cool name. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know how she died. Dramatically, I'm sure. No, but what happened after she died was dramatic. So she had just gotten home from the hospital. I'm assuming he probably, like, smothered her or something like that. Something simple. Uh, he did love her. So. A little too rough in the bedroom. Oh, jeez. Is it one of those things where, like, they think it's a mercy kill? It was definitely he. Because you say he loved her. So, like. Uh, yeah. In his messed up, fucked up, I don't psychosis, think whatever she, he has. He didn't that he, want like, her to see what he was about to do. Kind so of thing. he thinks it's a mercy yeah. yeah like she's gonna be worse off without me and mm-hmm. again i'm pretty sure he has an ego problem but oh, anyway yeah. Yeah. well so she had tuberculosis she wasn't gonna be able to take care of anything or herself without him and all this kind of stuff so she was just he was just i get yeah. to decide if you live or die yeah um two days later in the morning of the 18th he moved her body into one of the farm buildings so he just kind of sat with her dead body in the house what days? time of season is this? At May. It's spring. I mean, at least it's not midsummer, but mm-hmm. plus it still gets warm downstate. Yeah, the decomposition. By the time May yeah. hits, you're in the smell. 70s. Yeah. The smell. I um, mean, anyways. did he, you said that they weren't doing the farm, but did he still have any animals or anything? Because, I mean, he could turn around and be like, oh, that's just a manure in the barn. I guess. I, I'm not entirely yeah. sure. Especially if he has gonna cows. weren't going to be around for much skin. longer, that's for sure. Oh? Mm-hmm. Um... So he, he put puts her, in her bar. The farm buildings and then he blow, uh, kind of sets off a charge and he walks away and he blows up the whole farm. With incendiary um, And then explosions. he's still able to go blow up a school after this. So what he did. No one does anything? See, here's the thing. He well, timed it. Was, it was 180 acres. He probably could have blown up that property and nobody no would have really phones, noticed right away. It's hard to communicate, like, I guess. Okay. But here's okay. the thing there are alarm clocks. That tell when the detonation went off? So what he did, he set up, he went into that new school because he was on the school board. He set a for timer? For weeks and slowly built his bombs, slowly set the times because there was a west wing in the, or there was a south wing and there was a north wing of this new school building. The premeditation. Oh yeah, he thought about this. Weeks. It took him like, a, a, I think solid like two fucking months to set this all up. Um, the rage that we yeah. must have had to oh, have that yeah. commitment for so, every day for two weeks. You're gonna do that. Do you want to explain to me how this man had weeks worth of determination yeah, to blow up a school building? That's some hyper focus. But like. I could only look for Doritos Dynamite for like five minutes before <laughs> yeah. I was just like, "Fuck it, they There's don't have insane. it." There's every our snack <laughs> for two months. Yeah, or he would like he would go there. He would sneak into the basement and like set up everything, and then would hide it, and then like come back like the next week and set up the other one and you know make sure everything was right so he tried to time it to where he blew up the farm the school would also blow up at the same time okay that would make more so he didn't have to physically go there to set it off so did at that point did he have a timer on the one in the farm too no he set off manually he manually set off the farm one but he did at the same time that the school building one was gonna oh so it was that way he he didn't have to chance trying to get there too that answers your question then that's like how why he killed ellen one location to the other and no one's trying to do anything that explains why he killed ellen though because he already knew that bomb was gonna go off at the school he didn't want her to be held responsible for his true Mm -hmm. So. I can I can see that as a sadistic fucked up sort of love. Yeah, yeah, it's about mercy in the in same his mind. Well, in the same way as the uh, the Loria Manor Inn case that I did, where mm-hmm. he killed his wife and his grandson because nobody would have taken care of him when he died. 
It's a fucked up it's kind like, of I think he just didn't want her to be alone. Because I do definitely think he was going to, like, off himself after both buildings, like, went up. But, um, so, around the same time, you know, he had the, uh, arranged the timed explosions in the new school. The materials in the, only the North Wing, however, were the ones that actually, like, went off. As the North Wing of the school? North Wing of the school, yeah. was the only ones that actually ended went up off. going off, but it was enough to, like, kill a lot of kids and some adults. It was during school? It was during school. Oh, man. Um... He had set the time detonator to ignite dynamite and hundreds of pounds of um, petrol and oh. stuff like that at the school. So he had dynamite and petrol like all in the basement of the school. Yeah. And they and they probably would have had some kind of petrol there mm-hmm. to be able to run things like He's heaters also an electrician, and things or whatever. So he was like, oh, make sure everything's okay in the basement. He, yeah, he sure. can go down there and check things. And yeah, it probably wasn't suspicious it. for him to slowly bring in mm-hmm. petrol. He's probably like, oh, I just need this for the furnace, or I just yeah, need this for had, this. Or yeah. Slowly stockpiling. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. He and then secretly... you slip a couple things of dynamite in your pocket. Oh, yeah. Every day. And he, I, I get why he did it. bought all the materials and brought process. them in, like, into the basement. If he tried to bring it all in at once, that oh, yeah. That's why he did it over flag. Yeah. So, that makes sense. That's still commitment, but wow. Yeah, the second 500 pounds of explosives didn't go off so the south wing like wasn't destroyed um like you think mean? that maybe the north wing exploding would have set off the a domino wing. effect yeah. that's what i was thinking yeah happened. i mean it was a big building spaced oh, okay. out enough mm-hmm. i mean thank goodness um so he was just like i just blew up my house let me go see if the school blew up so he pulls up in his truck and half of it's gone half of it's gone <laughs> And, like, there's crying kids, like, running out from the south end, and, like, there's half-burned kids running out. Just oh, carnage. And, and massacre. And, like, the superintendent came Definitely out. Definitely a massacre. Mm-hmm. The superintendent survived and, like, came out, because he was on the south wing at the time. Mm. And he fucking just knew, knew that, it that was Andrew him. had a fucking thing in this. So he just starts fucking decking him and everything like that. And you some of struggling bitch. with him and all of that. And, um... I mean, he's the electrician, he truck, and the whole school blows up. I, yeah, yeah. even had without the history. dynamite in it, petrol <gasps> in it, just in it case. Is. And he set it off. Oh my God. Like, in the parking lot? Yeah, while him and the superintendent were fighting, so he just, like, went Just, like, run around, around lighting fires, just, yeah. yeah. So he blew it up right next to him, so did that kill him? Yeah, it killed himself and the superintendent. Okay, but there was, like, no kids in the immediate area? There was kids in the there was kids area. In the she's area. she's making a face, guys. You can't see it. Several others, and he also killed a kid who had survived the first explosion and was uh-huh. in the parking lot trying to find his parents. Imagine how terrified oh, you are, and you think that you like you got you know you, you got, got out. You, you know it. you just gotta find your mom, or your dad. Truck, you just gotta get home, and it blew up. Um, during the, the rescue, oh yeah. But it's the fact that he survived Seeing the first him walking one. across the parking lot and then just gone. I mean, any oh, of the parents. Lord. Imagine getting that call. Yeah. I'm not sure which hey, would be sorry, worse. Getting, kid, getting that know, call that having someone blew show up, up at your today. front door. I think having somebody show up at your front door is a lot fucking worse than a call because it's like in well, person. I'm, yeah, I'm not seeing sure that which without would the medical be worse. help and stuff because I feel like getting, you'd see that in a hospital, if, you know. If I, it was. I'm not sure if it would be worse getting the message that your kid died in the explosion. Or getting the message that, yeah, your kid was at school today, but we haven't found him yet. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm not unknown. sure which would be worse. You fucking both. We know he made it into the parking lot, but we don't know what happened. I mean, like, a lot yeah. of victims' families and true crimes mm-hmm. talk about the unknown being worse. Because That's what I'm saying, yeah. Not that there's mm-hmm. ever closure, but when you know and you have your body. If you at least and... have the guarantee of, okay, they're definitely this is what dead. Happened. You know what we happened. have something we can bury, we can mourn, we can But not on. knowing that period that of time. Oh. Yeah. I, maybe that's what I'm truly afraid of. It's not dying. The unknown. It's just the, afraid of the unknown. No one's gonna know you that You know what's funny? My I first tattoo. I don't think I'm then. gonna know that I'm dead. I have to show you a screenshot. My first tattoo that I got covered, you know, was never fear, and it was based off my dad always telling me, never fear the unknown. <laughs> Um, during the rescue efforts, searchers discovered, like, the additional explosives and everything like that. Um, and then... Was saw... there a bomb squad in that time? <laughs> Probably fucking not. They didn't know. Like, dynamite had just been and invented they, not 19, too 1927, let's call yeah. in the bomb squad. They'll just wear, like, 
buckets on their heads or something. <laughs> like, the dude that, like, invented dynamite fucking hates the fact that he did. Like, he even came out, like, it. yeah, he regretted it. He hated it. He's like, this is going to be used to fucking hurt people. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times, like, when they were doing, like, the Hoppenheimer shit in the um, Manhattan Project, he was referred to a lot because they were explaining it that it was, like, the same thing because he invented the first thing of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, this is going to kill a whole bunch of fucking people. So they were like, shit. This is, like, when dynamite got invented. Right. So, yeah, like, this History is a really great, itself. Yeah, great <laughs> case of showing, like... I mean, yeah, explosives helped us because, you know, we got through the mountains to do the railroads and all this kind of shit, and, like, we couldn't have done it with that. So, like, there's good things with it, but when you got fuckers that are like, I don't want to pay taxes, let me go blow up a fucking school, like... (laughs) You know, I, I think he only went after the school... Because the whole oh the superintendent or whatever is he felt personally yeah. attacked it was, he was literally by just it. because felt, of that it, dude. It, that and, was probably yeah. just that that pettiness that you were mm-hmm. talking about just coming mm-hmm. in. Like, it's so fucking petty that he was just like fuck this school, fuck taxes, fuck this, fuck that. Boom! Like <laughs> boom. how expensive would a thousand pounds of petrol been? Right and dynamite and the dynamite. So it was like a combined. And all the effort he put in, if he would have just went to work. See, here's the thing. Just find a job and go to. We'll get into this. So after the bombings, investigators found a um, wooden sign onto his fence because you know he petty, petty had to have the last word in. Always had to be the smartest man in the room. Had a little like he made a nice little sign. He stencil painted it in to say "criminals are made, not born." Oh my goodness. So he's blaming everyone else. <laughs> not himself. made me this way. It's not that yeah. I'm responsible I for my actions. I counter that by saying that it is not that they are made by those around them. Criminals are made by the decisions that they make. Mm-hmm. Plus it's also, you know, your a whole lot too. True, but I mean, stuff, I, he, he, he decisions a create a lot of your environment, though, like, especially after an adulthood. I think uh, when you're in child, you don't have much control of your environment, and oh, the nature no, versus no nurture That's is much larger of an impact yeah. on you. When you're Truth. an adult, you have decisions like they're up to you to make, and that controls the possibility mm-hmm. of your environment. So the the way know, that I feel I bad see for the child, it, not the adult, yeah, is that you know, in researching a lot of these cases and learning a lot of oh, this person had this problem, this person had that problem, and that's probably why they did this. I also have a lot of problems. Exactly. How I, many of I us was, don't mass I murder was, people yeah. and do these crazy I things? I was diagnosed with bipolar mm-hmm. and with oppositional defiance I listened to disorder so many as a kid. On and they had a problem with this and that, that and the other thing. Just monks. <laughs> now you're I'm making not. me feel bad. That would be manslaughter. Oh, Chip murder. Chip slaughter. Because it's not intentional. It's not a murder. <laughs> And it's not a man, so chip slaughter. I'm gonna like, have chocolate oh chip my, cookies later in his honor. Unintentional chip My oh man. So, so they were taking inventory of what was left, and they found that if he just sold all of his unused farm equipment, all those toys that he just wanted to play with, yeah, he would have had enough money to get completely pay off his mortgage and some. So he could have just sold off like the shit he wanted to tinker with, and he would have been fine. And those are my toys. What an idiot. Um, I don't want to sell my Xbox. <laughs> One of uh, Kehoe's sisters claimed his remains from fucking what was left of him. Um, Probably not much. And he's buried in a unmarked grave. Good, good call. Uh, without a funeral, his sister was like, fuck you, and just plopped him in the ground at uh, Mount Rest Cemetery in St. John's, Michigan. Um, the Price family, which is... Um, Ellen's maiden name and the family claimed her body and buried her in the la- uh, in Lansing under her maiden name. They were like, "Fuck this, dude!" Right? <laughs> her maiden name. Um. So for death totals, this is where totals, mm. um, he had killed forty five people total and injured at least fifty eight. Oof. Thirty eight of those were children. Oof. Six of them were adults. The victims were children in second grade to sixth grade. So All seven to twelve young. year olds. Yeah. 
Um, I believe that number includes himself. Superintendent. So was the whole school roughly that age, or was it like the young kids on this side, I think the old it was kids the on the other kids side? On one side and so the older he just on the happened other. to blow up all the young kids. Yeah. That's be sad either way, but Oh man, if I was one of those older kids, I'd have some PTSD, like survivor's guilt mm-hmm. or something. His... Especially finding out about the other bomb just under their feet. Like... Yeah, his imagine the ones that were siblings too. Is the oh, uh... still one of the worst in history? Just because of the yeah. yeah, so it's one of the worst. In Children history. dying has a much mm-hmm. higher emotional effect on people. And it's the worst in Michigan's history. So. I believe that I do. Michigan's had more school shootings rather than explosions and bombings. Like we, bombings are a little bit more rare. It especially you know now. I mean, it feel I feel like I, I, I'm gonna sound hella fucking like out of topic but like was the last major bombing the fucking boston marathon one i th- think oh yeah it's the last one i remember hearing about yeah, sorry, you don't about you don't exactly. hear about them as often because when it comes to things like bombing it's a little more quote-unquote specialized whereas yeah. with shooting like anybody can get a gun and just pow pull the trigger mm-hmm. you don't you have, have to, to know how to fucking make a bomb like <laughs> yeah. yeah you don't you don't you don't need a brain to use a gun no you really Which, don't I don't want this to turn into a gun control thing oh, God, because no. realistically, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's legal or illegal. If they want a gun, they'll find a fucking yeah, gun. Yeah, that's my exactly. whole fucking thing. That's the same all, reason why you wait, can right, still right, get right. like meth and heroin exactly. and shit if you know I'm where to look. I'm all up like, for like the hey, like safely store around kids, like that in like Michigan recently did. Like if you have kids mm. frequently inside of your home, then you have to have like the safe storage. But I mean, safely storing your fucking guns anyway. Okay. I mean, I know I don't have kids in my house. Teddy likes to leave them on a, um, like, I not have, completely locked up. I have mine tactically was... staged around my house, so if, if in any situation so I. I have what I need available to me, but I also have, like, backup tactical spots because mm-hmm. a couple of the spots that I have are very accessible to children right now, mm-hmm. but I know that if a kid is coming see, over, I, I can move over, this move one them, to that spot. I hide them. I, like, cover fine. them so they can't see them. I specifically tell them, like, I am very into telling kids, do not touch this. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do it safely, like, with my niece, I want to take her out to the range soon so she knows, like, this is what happens when you shoot a gun. This is what it feels like. This is how you safely act around this. If you like, mm-hmm. like safe, it's all about being safe. So you don't have the kids that accidentally pick up a gun, you know, shoot it. But then again, accidents do happen. Like there was this little girl who shot her shooting instructor. Yep. And I, him. yeah. Um, Damn. I remember when that happened. It, it was, was a complete accident. It was like a submachine yeah, gun no, or something. Not like no, but she was shooting a magnum. Just shot oh, a magnum. Right. Well, she should not have been shooting a no, magnum. She was like eight. And she like shot it and went, went back. Shot again, and she like shot right okay. in the chest. Was I was gonna ask, accident. I wouldn't want to ever sound like I'm like blaming anyone, but I was like, Is he standing in front of her? Like, what? No, he was I, off that's the, the side. ricochet, she just and she's kind a of, little, yeah, it and was... that second mm-hmm. finger's still on the trigger. And the head fucking huge, <laughs> exactly. Like you said, she shouldn't have been shooting something that big when you're training, yeah. Yeah. right? And even if she was like, I don't think I could even shoot being able to just keep your hands wrist. in the right spot, even if she did have an understanding with something with that much ricochet, mm-hmm. I feel like would be hard. Even if I, she knew to keep her finger off the trigger, I you feel mean like that ricochet? It, you mean recoil, not ricochet? Sorry. Sorry <laughs> yes, like, yeah, yes. I, I feel like if a child is going to learn to use a gun safely, they need to start with a twenty two because it's the only thing that they can really and control. And this is why I fucking size. love Teddy has a twenty two pistol. So do I. I fucking love it. It's I so great. Almost, There's it's no like recoil sports. or anything If you're going like to teach that. the kid to snowboard, you don't put him on a six-foot board. No. You and then do I also what's like within means, exactly. what exactly. they can handle, and you start mm-hmm. there, and you work your way up. Like, I'm not going to say what age is right for what kid, you know what I mean? But yeah, you start at the bottom, and you work your way up. Yeah. So that was the bath school bombing. I'm not going to put a doozy scale on this. This is five out of five doozy. Oh, yeah. Y'all do not get a choice. No. <laughs> no choice. However, um, as, as we briefly mentioned earlier, the snack was intended to be Doritos Dynamite, but we live in one of those areas where it's harder to find the sexy and exotic flavors. The sexy and exotic. <laughs> See, I like spicy things. For some reason, those are too fucking, like, I can't. I don't like ones where it's like, oh, this just hurts. It's not a 
like, oh, this tastes nicely, like, spicy. Right. I like a good tasting spice, not you one like the that's flavor, like, not I, the pain. I don't like the pain. That's how I am. I say that. Like, I like flavor from hot. I don't food, want things just to be hot just because they can hot, be hot painful. and taste like shit and they're bland. Mm-hmm. Those things. I just... should give you some of the buffalo butter that I got as leftovers from the uh, the ch- buffalo chicken that I did. Because mm. when I mellowed that sauce out, I actually put like a whole stick of butter in there and some lime <laughs> juice. Mm-hmm. So like, I it, it all solidified to the top, and it's this mm-hmm. beautiful orangey Wish color. My stomach. Let us guys know what you thought about today's episode. Yeah. Feel free to respond to the question mm-hmm. below. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to put up a doozy scale. No, because this was fucking because crazy. Because it, it was definitely five out of five doozies. But we will see you next week. I don't know what the story for next week is yet, but Fate's first episode is going to be the week after that, I believe. Mm-hmm. It's going to post on the 18th. That's, that's going to be your first episode. So I'm so excited. Make sure that you check out her first uh, first case on the 18th mm-hmm. and check out next week's episode. And yeah. feel free to check back with the other episodes and if you haven't. Let us know what though. other like, cases yeah. you'd want some guest hosts to... If you respond to the question below the podcast, usually it's, it auto-sets itself to like, what did you think of this episode? Mm-hmm. If you respond to that with literally any tips or advice or mm-hmm. questions or, or anything, anything you, you have heard. or cases you want at all, I mm-hmm. do see that. And I check that regularly, so we can check out anything you guys want. And that way, if you don't want to guest host and do it yourself, like Faith is choosing to do, then yeah. then you can uh, you can get a little bit of a credit, and we'll call you out for bringing up the case. Yeah. But we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.